Oh, randomness. It's in the air, guys. B Junior here, B Junior's Movie Cave on the Endurance Productions YouTube channel. Back to do another little segment of random review. You know, there's those films, those certain little gems out there that I just love every once in a while. Not all the time, but just every once in a while when life gets a little too extreme and you just want to retreat to something that's total randomness. And what I mean by the random review is basically these films that just have that, that nucleus, if you will, of just pure randomness. I mean characters that just come in and out of the film that don't add anything to the plot. There may not even be a plot. Well, that brings us to today's edition is Street Trash. That's right, guys. 1980s horror classic. And see, that leads us into the first point today. Street Trash always gets pigeonholed as being pretty much a horror movie. Is it really a horror movie? Is it an exploitation movie? What is this movie? That's what I asked myself whenever I watched Street Trash, because Street Trash, unlike some of the other ones I'll probably cover in this series, um, really, I've often said this in many circles, there is a theme to the movie as to what it's supposed to be about, but there really is, in my humble opinion, no plot. I'll tell you why. This is the Arrow Video Edition. It's a pretty cool edition. It's a two-disc or DVD. Um, I highly recommend picking this one up. You get the booklet and all the little extras and yeah, so forth and all that good stuff. But, Street Trash. Yeah, where to start with this little gem? Where to start with this little gem? It brings a smile to my face, a genuine smile. Revisited it recently, and the best way to sum up uh, Street Trash, uh, I don't want to call it even plot-wise or story-wise, there's all these different little stories going on all at the same time. Think of a different reality, a different universe, if you will, of hobos. Yes, bums, hobos, whatever you want to call them. Everybody has their own name for them. Street trash, whatever you want to call them. Down on their luck, people who live off the land and are very grubby in nature, okay? That's the best way I can explain it. What this movie is a testament to, it's, it's like a coexisting universe of hobos, the hobo universe that coexists with our, our reality but we don't seem to notice it. This, there's just like this whole other reality of hobo universe going on while our regular everyday lives are happening. Okay, starts out basically there's the local liquor store. Local liquor store uh, proprietor is trying to make some extra money, finds an old grubby looking uh, like case of this thing called Tenafly Viper in these old pint glass, uh, glass style bottles. Puts it on the counter for a dollar a piece or something like that. Just It's hobo, total hobo juice. I mean, he knows it's going to fly off the shelf really quick. He says, oh, I'll just put this out there. Well, turns out Tenafly Viper has actually got some sort of government chemical in it or something of that nature. It's never really fully explained. But essentially, if you drink Tenafly Viper, you're going to die in a very horrible way. You either explode, implode, or dissolve into this big, goopy mess. Yeah. Hence the cover there. Gives you an idea of where this movie's going to go. Yeah. He drank Tenafly Viper. There it is right there. But, uh, yeah. Hokey special effects abound. I think that's one of the reasons why it gets pigeonholed is pretty much in the horror genres because there is some meltdown scenes, things like that, kind of Toxic Avenger-esque kind of uh, uh, special effects in that manner. Very comical, very hokey. I mean, even... To some degree, those effects wouldn't scare small children. Now, I don't recommend the, the youngsters watch this movie because it is an R-rated flick. There's a lot of language and things like that in there that you probably want to screen out first parents. But Street Trash will not disappoint in the realm of randomness, if you will, because the Tenafly Viper thing is only like a subplot to the movie. It's like a backseat subplot to the movie, but there really is no plot. Remember that. Then we go into kind of like the... Uh, the, the good guy hobos and you kind of experience where their lives are at the junkyard where everybody seems to reside and the junkyard proprietor is a real sleaze ball and he's got this uh, pretty uh, secretary girl that's infatuated with one of the good guy hobos and yeah it's just there's another uh, subplot or direction that it goes in then you've got the king of the the junkyard or king of the hobos he's this real militant you know beefy guy who's like king of the hill and he's like always beating up other people treating everybody like crap and there's some hilarious scenes in there there's a hilarious scene with a male penis and i'm not going to say anything other than that okay guys you know if there's a flying penis in the movie it's going to be great okay take it from me junior 
So anyway, without further delay, getting through more of this uh, theme, if you will, not a story, but a theme, that kind of roll, it's just about all the shenanigans that go on and throughout the movie. People are trying to get their hands on Tenafly Viper, unknowingly that it's going to melt them down. So there's many meltdown scenes in the film. That it kind of figures back into the main plot, I guess you would call it, about who controls the hobodom or hobo universe. And it's kind of like a power struggle. Yeah, that's kind of where this movie is going. See, it's kind of hard to pull it out because it's going in all these different directions at the same time. It's totally zany, totally exploitation, grindhouse. Uh, aficionados will love it. Um, the film was directed by uh, J. Michael Murrow and written by Roy Frumkes, who you know is the documentarian of the Dawn of the Dead for George Romero and all that kind of stuff. Um, he gives a lot of insight and special features on this particular edition of where their minds were or weren't during the filming and uh, inception of this movie's ideas. Yeah, I think it's just that's the best way to say it. it's a collection of ideas that kind of came together. How this movie, like much of the ones in the random review series, got a theatrical release and even got re-released on VHS and DVD and is still alive today is a testament to what this movie is about. There's something there, guys, or it would not be on multiple editions and still available. I think Blue Underground has actually got a great edition of this out too, so it's probably a little more readily available than Arrow. I can highly recommend the Arrow edition. I like it probably the best. For street, we're talking about street trash here, guys. I mean, you know, get one that works. That's what I'm gonna say. And uh, unsure if there's any uh, any other major editions, but I think if you go with one of those two, you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, that's really all I can say about street trash. It's just a some days in the life uh, in the alternate in the alternate universe reality of hobos while they're all trying to get their hands on this tenafly viper, which is sort of like an epidemic backseat plot to the movie where it's killing the hobos internally by way of drinking it, consuming this foul liquor or whatever it is, government chemical or whatever it is. I say, guys, if you're into these kind of random movies like Toxic Avenger, Pieces, Raw Force, any of those in the random sub-genre, sub -sub I should say, Street Trash will not disappoint if you guys really like those type of films. So rock on. Catch you later. Hope you guys enjoyed the overview of Street Trash Randomness. Beware of Tenafly Viper. Bye.